Hi guys, welcome back. Now this episode features a retrospective of another of my favorite RPGs of all time, Dynamix's Betrayal at Krondor. Now Betrayal at Krondor is based on the writings of Raymond E. Feist, a famous fantasy author. He's probably best known for his Rift War books. I remember reading his uh, Magician series back in the day. And I was uh, actually in a bookstore uh, browsing the fantasy books and I came across this one. Uh, which is Krondor the Betrayal. Now at first I thought this book was based, or is, is what the uh, the game was based on. But as a matter of fact, the opposite is true. Now what happened was the game was an original story based on a Feist universe. Uh, but then Feist himself liked it so much he decided to integrate it into his novels. Uh, so he wrote this one to sort of add, uh, add the action there to the canon. So a pretty interesting story. Uh, now the game itself is of course uh, probably best known for its uh, good writing, uh, fun characters. Uh, but there's also some uh, nice innovations uh, to the gameplay, uh, role-playing game mechanics. So anyway, got a lot to cover here. So without further ado, here is Betrayal at Krondor. Now, like a good fantasy novel, Betrayal at Krondor puts you right in the middle of the action in the very first scene. Now, a lot of the story is told through these cinematic cutscenes. And you may have noticed these actors are moving a little stiffly. It's not because they're bad actors, but simply there's no full motion video. This is 1993. I'm uh, pretty sure full motion video didn't take off, at least for a few more years. All right, so I'm getting uh, searching these corpses, something that's familiar to pretty much all role-playing games. A few things you might notice, uh, my armor and weapons deteriorate over time, so there's 78%, 18% there. You can uh, repair this to some extent, but you'll probably spend most of your time searching corpses and trying to get stuff gear a little bit better. Uh, here is a list of all the skills that I can learn. I can focus on these by clicking or emphasizing, de-emphasizing. Quite a few skills, uh, not so many stats though, just health, stam, speed, and strength. Uh, those pretty much do what you would expect. Uh, one unusual thing is the health is uh, it kind of the health and stam work a little bit like the the shields and something like Halo. So you lose stam up to a point, and after that's gone, you start to lose health, and after that's gone, you die. <laughs> uh, you also use stam to uh, swing your sword, sort of a power attack, and to cast spells. So. Uh, quite a, it doesn't take very long to uh, master this, but there's are some things you have to know. Uh, here's another one of these cutscenes. It'd be pretty boring if I just, you know, sat here and <laughs> played through these. You can obviously read these on your own time, but suffice it to say, if you're the kind of guy who hates reading texts, the kind of guy who's never read Raymond D. Feist, for example, you're not gonna like this game, so don't even bother. That said, it would be kind of cool if somebody remade this with some good some good acting and voices and, and whatnot. <laughs> Just hope they find better wigs next time. All right, that's done. Let's uh, move along. Now, there's a couple interesting map options here. I'm in the de default view here, which is where you want to be most of the time because you can see trees and monsters and chests and things. I would also have this view, sort of a top-down view, uh, which is very useful for orienting yourself. It's also a big map view, I'll show you in a second. But you really don't want to spend too much time in those other views because you'll miss things like this cool chest. This is the Mordell ch uh, Riddle chest, lots of these sprinkled around. Now, these are completely invincible to weapons or lockpicks, but conveniently they uh, left clues. <laughs> they can be opened just by solving a little three-letter, three-little riddle there. And see, you've been wasting all that money on safe deposit boxes. You know, the U.S. government had a system like this for a while, but they had to stop because nobody could figure out the riddles. Okay, moving right along. You know, as I said, the really the only mission here is to go south to Krondor, at least in Chapter 1, but you miss out a lot if you do that. You should spend some time exploring. For instance, if I just zoomed right to Krondor, it would have missed meeting young Squire Philip here. If you read a little bit into the game, uh, Owen comes from a rich family. He's got lots of rich friends, and uh, the warrior Locklear has been gotten into some trouble with Prince Arutha and been not really exiled, but just sent off to some undesirable duty. He meets there with a traitorous Moradel. 
So here's where, if you uh, talk to the characters, you'll get more of these keywords that you can try in the conversation options. Now, you're not, there's not really dialogue trees here, though. You just, you talk to people, you learn things, you go back and talk to them again. There might be some new options. But it, this is how you get the side quests. Lots and lots of optional quests you can find out about and do. You get some cool rewards. You probably really should read uh, Raymond D. Feist's Magician series. That's the best, in my opinion. Oh, oh, little, little pile of doo-doo! Gotta search the doo-doo. What do we have? Uh, kind of reminds me of World of Warcraft now. I Got a little hole here with some rations. Ah, uh, that's good food. <laughs> Actually, you need to always examine the, the rations, because some of them are poisoned or uh, uh, rotten, spoiled. You don't want to give that to your guys. All right, anyway, <laughs> if you... If you read the uh, Magician series, you'll learn all about Pug and Arutha and all these guys, and you get a lot more out of the game. Okay, so I found this little blue uh, blue road to Lamut. have no idea if that's how you pronounce that, but we'll go with it. Maybe that's the mutt that left the, the pile back there. Okay, we're going to zoom in. <laughs> I don't know why I did that there. Ah, here we are in the idyllic village of Lamut. All who visit Lamut are equal, for in Lamut all is equally queer. Okay. <laughs> oh, I forgot to mention, there's a little pixel hunting in scenes like this, and you can find little hidden stashes. Adds a little something extra to the game. You can read about the uh, currency. I mean, there's so much detail that went into this game, it's really just amazing. They really, really did a great job of uh, adapting Feist's novels into a game form. Now here we are in the Blue Wheel Inn. I can talk to this old dwarf. You know, so I mean, <laughs> we haven't, I've yet to fight a rat yet. You know, I'm wondering when the, we're going to get to fight some rats. But Okay, so a little more backstory. Uh, this guy apparently knew old Locky back in the day. He's going to give me a quest here in a second. You can always count on a tavern in a role-playing game to give you quests. You know, if there's one thing I've learned from all my years of role-playing is that if you need a job, you don't go to the unemployment office. You go to the tavern. Have a few pints and talk to strange dwarves. Actually, the, the inns do a lot in this game. It's, what, what, it's where you buy your food. It's also where you heal. You can you can camp out in the out in the woods, but you won't restore completely. Only up to eighty percent. You have to come to an end to top <laughs> top it off. <laughs> and if you're wounded, you need to drink some ale or uh, one of their alcoholic drinks before you go upstairs. Now you know you're living in a fantasy when you actually feel better after a night of hard drinking. You know, I'm becoming increasingly aware that you really do have to be a serious nerd to enjoy this game. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, I'm going to skip ahead. we got to get into some combat here. All right, let's see what we can find to kill. Oh, we've got a mercenary, an assassin. And now here's my favorite part of the game. Turn-based tactical combat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Even got the little grid down there. Now, they improved a lot of this stuff so much in the sequel to this, Betrayal and Antara, but unfortunately, they also got into some uh, disagreements with Feist, so that's not based on Feist. They sort of created their own little universe for that, but I like the interface better in that game. But anyway, it's, it's, it's okay here. So, as you can see, it's turn-based. I have a range to think about. I have uh, magical spells. From Owen, he doesn't really have too many spells at this point. I can blind the guys for a little bit. I can do sort of a heal spell. And if they try to run away, I can pull a little scorpion-like maneuver. But all the spells cost stam and then health if you run out of stam, so you have to be careful with that. Now with the guys with swords, if I click on the left mouse button, that does a thrust, which is more accurate but does less damage, or I can swing with the right mouse button. Uh, less accurate, more damage, but it also takes Stam away. So you got a lot to consider there. Got a few coins. One of the things I really hate about this game is when you kill the enemies, you have to actually click on the corpses. And if they're right on top of each other, you can have a really hard time uh, separating it 
You know, I think it'd be a lot more considerate of these bad guys to die in a convenient position. Now, one thing I love about this game is this top-down perspective you can get. Eliminates the need for graph paper, which I guess is a negative thing for some of you guys out there, but I like this system. Now, if you use this view, though, you can see the enemies, and if you click on them before you get too close, you can ambush. And that makes a huge difference, because you, uh, as you'll see, get a few free <laughs> whacks at them before they attack you. These battles do actually get quite difficult at times. It's easy to get killed, and once one of your characters gets down to, uh, to critical condition, you have to find a temple. Which is a real pain in the ass, so you probably just want to reload if that happens. Let's talk a little bit about these buttons I have. Now, this one is for casting spells. Uh, this one is for retreating. This one is for defense mode. This one appraises the enemies. This one will let you restore some health and stam, and this activates auto combat. All in all, it's a very intuitive system. You don't really need to be a dice rolling aficionado to make sense of this. As usual, the auto combat leaves a lot to be desired. You're much better off making your own tactical decisions. But if you want a little break to go refill your drinking horn, I guess you can use that. All right, let's skip a little bit more. This is uh, getting close to the end of Chapter 1. I am in the sewers. Thought I would show you this just so you could see what the dungeons look like. The great thing about a sewer is it doesn't matter what you ate the night before. Good thing I've got my auto mapper. It makes this a hell of a lot easier to be able to see these mazes from the top down. Um, the dungeons, uh, like a lot of the old school RPGs, you'll have to have a light source. It could be a torch or a magic spell or a magic ring. You also need a few special items like ropes uh, to get across these <laughs> pits. Now well, the story here is I've got to get into the palace to talk to Arutha, uh, the prince, but uh, there's some kind of problems with the gate, so if I'm, I'm having to sneak around these sewers. It's kind of a plot device to familiarize me with the Thieves' Guild, <laughs> the mockers, and all this kind of stuff. You know, a lot of people ask me, what are some good classic RPGs to play that are still fun today that have held up pretty well? And I think this game holds up very well because of that emphasis on the text. You know, people don't talk about novels being obsolete, no matter how old they are. Uh, J.R.R. Tolkien, or you go back and read Raymond E. Feist. You know, those novels 50 years from now will still be just as fun to read then as they are now, and were when they were originally published. And uh, This game is very similar to that. There's a couple of different versions of this game out there. Uh, the one that you can get from GOG that I recommend has CD um, audio, Red Book audio, I believe, which is why the music sounds so good and uh, still quite pleasant to hear. <laughs> it's not bleeps and bloops, <laughs> as you might have expected. And I've made it all the way to chapter two. I think there's uh, a good ten chapters or so. I mean, this is going to take you a long time to finish, and, and by the time you're done, you probably will feel like you've read a, a novel, if not two really fat novels worth of story. Really good stuff if you like fantasy. So just to wrap up here, if you want to play this game, I would uh, start by reading a novel, uh, at least one of Raymond E. Feist's Riff War novels, probably starting with uh, my favorite, which is Magician. That's pretty widely available. I'm sure you can get a copy of that for a reasonable price. It'll give you a lot, of, a lot of background, so you'll appreciate what happens in this game more. The manual does have a little synopsis. Of course, that's not going to compare it to actually reading the novel. It's kind of funny, too, in the manual, Raymond E. Feist has a little preface where he talks about how much he likes the game, but in the novelization, he's got a preface where he says that uh, when they contacted him to do this game, he was very skeptical and basically told him that there's no way they could afford to pay him <laughs> what he deserved. <laughs> so I guess he changed his tune after this became a, a bestseller. But anyway, there you have it, Betrayal at Crondor. And that's all for this week's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Now, if you want to get a copy of Betrayal at Crondor, you can get on eBay or you can go on these uh, pirate websites, abandoned wear sites, and try to download the uh, ROMs, but then you're going to be yanking your hair out 
trying to get it to run on a modern PC, and unless you uh, <laughs> have plenty of hair that you don't mind losing, I have a better solution. The, there will be a link in the show notes to good old games, uh, that's GOG.com, but don't, don't go to that site directly. I'll look at the show notes on YouTube and I'll have a link for you. If you use that link, you'll be able to get Betrayal at Crondor and the sequel in a pack already uh, set up already and, and good to go on a modern PC for a very good price and you'll be supporting Matt Chat at no additional cost to you. So by all means, go there and get uh, the game pack today. Just remember to use the link. Also, I want to thank everyone who has been donating and contributing to the show. You guys have really been utterly fantastic. I'm really just amazed at the, uh, the level of support that I've gotten from you guys. Really, really appreciate that. And as you know, your level of enjoyment increases after you've donated. So if you haven't ever done that, uh, please ante up. I also have a link to the uh, support Matt Chat page for you. Matter of fact, this week I will be enjoying a Sapient Trip Ale. I thought this uh, looked kind of interesting. It's a really, really good ale from the Dark Horse Brewing Company in Michigan. So thanks to everyone who has been donating. Now the quotation this week comes from Raymond E. Feist, of course, and it goes something like this. The brave man is not the one without fear, but the one who does what he must despite being afraid. To succeed, you must be willing to risk total failure. <laughs> and on that note, see you guys next week. Well, the world of leukemia began as a role-playing environment for a bunch of college students back in the 70s. Uh, like kids everywhere, uh, my friends in college and I were broke. Fantasy role-playing was a very inexpensive hobby relative to a lot of other things we could be doing. You basically needed some pencils, some paper, and some funny-looking dice, and a lot of imagination.